welcome to Seek Safely's April Roundtable discussion. Uh, today we're going to be talking a little bit about our consumer protection bill that we have working its way through the New York State uh, Legislature. So there's a bill both in the Senate and in the Assembly. And um, we're going to be talking with Sandy Galef, who is a longtime supporter of the bill. Um, she's an Assemblywoman from District 95. And she helped draft the original bill back in 2016, and she's been with us the whole way. So we'll get sort of an inside perspective from her on what's going on with the bill right now. Um, so before we do that, I'm just I'm gonna give you a little bit of a summary of what is in this bill. Um, so here is actually the bill's summary itself. So as you can see, it requires self-help practitioners to disclose information to clients regarding risks, to produce a risk management plan, and to create a registry within the Department of State. So the bill's number is Assembly A5658 and Senate S1643. Um, when a bill is working its way through the legislature, there has to be a bill on both sides of the legislature. So uh, once they can agree on one version of the bill, then it will get pushed through. So as I mentioned, um, we've been working on this effort for a while, um, but I think it's actually been great because we really have a bill now that um, it feels like it really addresses the issue. It's, it targets specifically uh, non-licensed individuals who are providing some kind of self-help guidance to consumers. It requires them to disclose potential risk at the event, um, their credentials, and also a risk management plan that they would have in place in the event that something went wrong at the event. So these are um, like risk mitigation for both physical or emotional mental issues that could arise during an event. It also requires that these non-licensed individuals uh, register with the State Department, which is great because one of the problems that we identified right from the beginning um, was that there was no professional licensing body to do anything about what had happened. You know, if a doctor um, harms a patient in his care or in her care, they will probably lose their license. Um, but in the self-help industry, there's not really anything like that. So we're glad that this bill sort of starts to get at that issue, requiring these people to register with the state so that they're on the state's radar. And um, we think that if it doesn't compel these providers to act more responsibly to begin with, if they do act irresponsibly, it will provide sort of a framework for people to say, you know what, you were doing something that clearly violated this law. And that will help, I think, avoid situations like what our family experienced. Hi, so I'm joined here by Sandy Galef. Sandy is the New York State Assemblywoman from District 95. So that's uh, Hudson Valley, like Ossining and Peekskill. Right, and I've been yeah. to uh, Putnam County a bit too. Okay, perfect. Great, yeah, it's beautiful over there. Absolutely. Yep. So Sandy has been a longtime supporter of our legislative effort. Um, we first met with you, I think, back in 2015, and then the first draft of the bill was 2016. So we've been chipping away at it since then. And um, yeah, so I'd love to hear, you know, about your involvement with the bill. Um, at this point in the assembly, it's number A5658. Um, so yeah, I'd love to hear about, you know, why you were compelled to get involved with us uh, from the beginning and sort of what you've learned about this effort since then. Well, I'd always heard in and, and seen and read in the paper about issues of people um, being involved in self-help or being getting involved in a cult or um, or you know sometimes it's the same and um, the the negative things that happen as a result of that so I've always been concerned about it and um, and and so when I had a friend um, ask me over for lunch 
where we were all there. And, um, and it was a good friend of mine who, who'd gone to, to school with uh, Kirby. Right. And, um, and she just, I did, I, she just invited me over and said, I want to just talk with you about, you know, something that has, um, gone on in my life, which is very negative. And, you know, seeing, I guess at that point, you must have all been thinking about legislation. And here you have a legislator, um, <laughs> around a table with you, uh, yeah. discuss the issue. And, and that's how it all began. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah, that was um, Deborah Goldstein, right? Who's, who's yes. one of our, uh, she's one of our board members and she's been so helpful through all of our work. Um, yeah, so I, we've been so lucky to have you. You've been such an asset in helping us draft the legislation and then kind of keeping the momentum as, um, as we've been working through it. So I'm interested to hear, you know, uh, I actually, I actually majored in public policy. I did a master's in public policy, so I know that the legislative process can be, can yeah, be tricky. Slow. Yeah, exactly. Tricky and slow and changing, and you know, pulling together people that support legislation. Mm -hmm. it, it's not done with just a single factor. Uh, there are many factors in play. Right. And I actually haven't heard any negatives about the bill. Mm -hmm. but, um, we need to continue to work really hard to, to get it passed. And, right. Um, you know, we do so many, I'm thinking we do so many licensing bills. Mm -hmm. So many other uh, professions or non-professions. I think one of my first issues was about marriage counselors and having them licensed. Mm -hmm. the impact they could have on a um an individual and a family and a relationship um and if you weren't dealing with people who were really upfront, knew what they were doing and and this is the same issue you mm -hmm. need to have uh people in the self-help field um that you know we they've had some talent they've got some credentials um, you know, we, we have a, a licensing process for them and we have an ability for people to be educated about what kind of services they really provide. So, right. you know, it's, there's no reason not to be supportive of it, to help New Yorkers. Yeah. And we set the tone. We may be helping people around the country, right? Jen? Yeah, exactly. That's our hope. Um, yeah. When we, you know, right after, uh, Kirby had passed away at the, self-help event that she was at this is one of the things that we identified we said there's no like licensing board or professional body that can take the credentials away of this the person who caused this tragedy to happen and so we thought you know it it felt like there was an opportunity there to create something that could protect consumers of self-help in you know in the future and that's exactly right our our hope was you know we first started speaking to someone that we knew uh, on the federal level, and they said, go to your state first, get it done on your state level, and then that's sort of your access point after you have it, after you have some kind of legislation in one state, then you'll be able to take it to the federal level. So that's right. why, yeah, and that's how we started out. Sometimes you take it to other states too. Because, right. You know, we all, we, we kind of all pattern ourselves. Uh, when we see a good idea, um, you'll see that it's picked up in in other state legislatures as as there's enough promotion there's education uh there's public relations uh and and the press obviously right it's really yeah. important yeah that's great so yeah one of the things i've noticed is that um this bill now has gone through i think there have been three different numbers for it at this point and uh right from the beginning it was you know it was very focused on the licensing aspect um, and then I think that this, the version that we have now is the strongest version yet. So I feel pretty good about that. What do you think about sort of how it's changed and evolved over time? I, I think that's true because it's, um, uh, it's the licensing, but it also, or the registry, mm -hmm. uh, it also um, directs information um, to the, the person who's signing the contract. Right. Um, to know, you know, what they are really signing. Do do the the people that they're signing up with have the right credentials, and uh, and also um, making sure that 
if you're in a situation um, as as your sister had had been, um, there, there would be medical people around um, to to be there on site, big event, small event, whatever. Right. To to assure um, that everybody's taken care of in, in a healthy manner. So um, no, I I think it's it's really good. And, um, you know, and, and I wouldn't, nobody should ever be discouraged about the fact that things don't happen overnight because usually in, at least in the New York state capital, we don't do things every night every, right. you know, that fast. It, it takes a while. Sometimes it takes years. And, and I just, I think on average, they say it's, it's seven years uh, to get a bill done. And obviously sometimes it's longer, uh, sometimes it's shorter. Um, so I think the pressure is on this year to try to, try to really, um, cause I think the bill is right now. It's been amended to be, uh, I think as perfect as possible. Mm-hmm. And the time is to get it done this year and right. have a few more months left. And so we have some work to do. Yeah. So speaking of that pressure, um, what can you tell people who want to support this bill, particularly residents of New York State? How can citizens get involved to try to push their own assembly people and senators to support this bill? Well, let me just say, you know, I, I get a lot of emails from people. And I actually get emails from people in other states, too. <laughs> so, uh, you know, and, and that would be very interesting if people started to get emails from around the country, which mm-hmm. is very good. Um, but, uh, you know, writing a real letter, send a real letter. I mean, those are unusual these days. Right. Say, um, and, uh, you know, maybe they get read better because there's so few of them. <laughs> right. And, um, I I would suggest to people to um, write a letter to the editor about it in your local home area. There are a lot of there are a lot of local uh, journals um, or or online uh, media. Just write a letter to it and how important it is, um, and that basically saying that anybody can be in Kirby's situation. Um, right, it is so easy. And, and we've learned so much about, in New York State, um, the issue, and I'm trying to think of the name of the person, um, Keith, Keith Ranieri. Right, was yeah. in the sex cult. Here we had it right outside of the Capitol. Yeah. Um, this kind, the same situation, a little different um, area. Um, and But, you know, people were really taken advantage of. Uh, now he's gone to jail um, yeah. for a long time, which is a which is a good thing. But um, you don't want to get into it in the first place. So right. you can use that as an example, especially in New York, to highlight that here we had it right here. Um, yeah. If we don't know about other instances, you know, it was right, uh, you know, right around us. Yeah. And people that we might have known um, that really became sex slaves, um, you know, in this whole process. So that might also be helpful to drive it home. At least I'm, I'm, I'm trying to use that in my advocacy um, because, you know, somebody thinking about Arizona, it's not quite as close. They haven't seen it in the media, but they have seen uh, about, about this uh, organization, N-X-I-V-M. Right. Yes. Yeah. Nexium. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we've we've been trying to highlight that as well. And we've been trying to explain to people, well, that was a very extreme example, you know, and it, like a, it fits right. in that cult category. But on the other hand, um, their front organization was a self-help, you know, leadership development organization. And all of the tactics that they used to sort of coerce and uh, gain control over the participants are all the tactics that we've seen in other abusive self-help type situations. So for sure, that's um, a really compelling example right in New York that can uh, sort of drive home the need for this legislation. So, And it wasn't long ago, you know, this this past year or so. Yeah, um, that's it. That could be helpful. But but I I do think, um, you know, at town meetings too, if your legislators are having any town meetings, they may be having them on Zoom. Mm get right on there 
and talk about the legislation. And if that legislature, legislator doesn't know about it, then you're the one, you know, to to uh, alert them to it. Remember, in Albany, we, we sometimes have twelve to 15,000 bills that we're dealing with. Right. <laughs> so not every legislator knows about every piece of legislation. Right. So it is, you know, educating and, and phone calls, phone calls, you know, perfect. Yeah. Perfect. You know, and if there are a number of them, um, I, we don't count how many people call on a different issue, but, but we notice how many people are calling and, you know, all of a sudden it alerts us to, oh, there's something going on out here. It's not just one call. Right. A number of calls and you can call outside your district. Don't worry about it. You know call people just because it adds up. It really, it really does. Makes it right. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Thank you so much for those tips and thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate you coming to talk to us about your involvement and what you think of this bill now. So. Right. Absolutely. And you know, I have, I, I, <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I was, I, I, I don't know that it's in the, in the script. Yeah. It is. <laughs> And I, I was just so fascinated by the writings and I want to thank you and, and your mom and everybody else has been involved because uh, you, you have to make a difference in other people's lives. There are other people innocently are going to be caught up with somebody who is not a good person. Right. Uh, doesn't really have you at the top of their list that they really care about. And uh, so, you know, hopefully with legislation, um, with books like this, that people can read and understand what's going on, uh, we can make a big difference. So, mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you so much. So as Sandy mentioned, um, if you are, especially if you're a New York State resident and you want to help us with this effort, you can get in touch with your Senate, your Senator and your Assembly member. I'm gonna put up a link here for that. So if you go to the legislation section on our website, um, you'll see a bit of background about the bill and there's a link there where you can click to read the bill in its entirety and as well um, send a message to your senator asking them to support this bill. Uh, Sandy also outlined a few other ways that people can get involved. Uh, she mentioned um, physical letters are great because they tend to get so few of them. Phone calls are also great. And one of the really interesting things that Sandy mentioned was that even people from out of state can start contacting some of these legislators to sort of apply the pressure and raise awareness of this bill. As she said, these legislators are dealing with thousands of bills at any one time. So um, the challenge really becomes getting it on their radar so that when they see the bill to vote on it, they'll know what it is and they'll be ready to support it. Thank you so much for watching or listening. Um, we post these little updates at the end of every month, the last Friday of every month. So stay tuned for next month as well. And be sure to share with your friends and family, especially if you know that they'll help us with this effort. Thank you. Mm -hmm.